hello students in this lecture we will learn about what is damping in oscillation okay and we will learn about what is over damping under damping and critical damping okay so in this lecture i will not talk particularly about the different mathematical derivations in those connections okay i will give you an overview that what is damping what is critical damping what is uh, over damping and what is under damping okay so let's start okay first of all we will review something in regards of vibration and i think you all know this thing just i am refreshing about this theory that if there is a mass which is over a spring you can see and this mass is vibrating on this spring okay so such type of vibration is called as undamped vibration or undamped oscillation okay so what is the difference between damped and undamped oscillation see damped oscillation is the one in which some force is acting to reduce the vibration to reduce the amplitude of vibration which is trying to kill the energy of vibration okay so in case damping forces are acting then ultimately the vibrating mass will stop to vibrate okay so in case no force is acting to stop the vibration okay then it is called as undamped vibration and in case some force is acting to reduce the vibration then it is called as damped vibration one of the example is shock absorber of a motor bike or a car okay whenever a car is running okay so the wheel faces different hills and valleys of the road okay so inside uh, the shock absorber there is a spring okay so what happens due to those hills and valleys the spring is compressed or it is expanded still no vibrations are produced on the car the reason being that there is a damper provided in the shock absorber okay so whatever energy is imposed to the spring okay it is killed in a short interval of time so in case the energy of vibration is killed then there is no scope of vibration left okay so the damper provided inside the shock absorber acts in the direction to reduce the extent of vibration reduce the amplitude of vibration like this okay now this mass is over the spring okay we know this thing that the force exerted on this mass okay the inertial force and the force exerted on this mass is given by minus kx okay k is the spring constant x is the compression or tension on the spring okay so force is given by mass into acceleration acceleration is given by double differentiation of di displacement with respect to time so our equation ultimately turns to d square x by dt square plus k by m into x equals to 0 and why negative over here reason being that the spring always puts its force on the mass in opposite direction if mass is moving in downward direction then spring is acting in upward direction okay and in case mass is moving in upward direction spring is trying to pull the mass in downward direction okay so it is always in opposite direction so this is the reason the negative is over here so ultimately our equation is d square x by dt square plus k by m equals to 0 which finally reduces to in place of k by m we can write omega square okay then omega is given by root k by m this is the angular frequency of this vibration okay so this is the case when there is undamped oscillation no force is acting to reduce the vibration now in case the mass is subjected to damping effects okay then this is the symbolic diagram this is the damper we are providing okay so what is the theory of damper see the damper produces the force on the vibrating mass and the damping force is proportional to the velocity of mass at an instance of time whatever the velocity is okay so the force of damping is proportional to that velocity more the velocity of mass is more the damping force will be so velocity continuously changes in the vibration so the damping force also changes okay so to remove this proportionality sign we are applying c c is called as damping coefficient okay so the damping force is given by cv okay and we can written as dx by dt single differentiation of displacement with respect to time okay now the equation of motion for this mass will be whatever force exerted on this mass is equals to minus damping force minus spring force reason being that we already know that spring always acts in opposite direction of moving mass similarly damping force also acts in the direction opposite to the moving mass in case mass is moving in upward direction okay damper tries to stop that up upward mo movement because i already told that damping forces always tries to reduce the extent of vibration okay so it has to act in opposite direction and similarly in case the mass is moving in downward direction then also damper acts in opposite direction to stop that downward movement okay so our equation is this which can finally written as f plus fd plus f is equals to 0 okay now f is the inertial force force exerted on this mass that is ma fd we have already learnt that it is cv 
and spring force is kx so which can be written as m d square x by dt square plus c dx by dt plus kx equals to 0 okay so in other form it can be written as mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx equals to 0 means we can also write this d square x by dt square double differentiation of displacement with respect to time in terms of x double dot and this single differentiation of displacement with respect to time we can write x single dot equals to like this now what is over damping critical damping and under damping see in case this c over here the damping coefficient of this damper okay is equal to 2 omega m omega is the angular frequency of this vibration okay so in case it is exactly equal to 2 omega m it is called as critical damping okay and in case this damping coefficient is greater than this magnitude 2 omega m it is over damping and in case this c of this damper is less than 2 omega m it is called as under damping okay now in case you are dividing the damping coefficient with the critical damping coefficient it is denoted as zeta called as damping ratio c by cc so definitely for the case of critical damping c is exactly equal to cc so zeta equals to 1 for over damping zeta will be greater than 1 and for under damping zeta is smaller than 1 okay now what is the difference c for the case of over damping what happens if c is greater than 2 omega m i mean to say then if the particle starts from amplitude amplitude is the maximum displacement of the mass from the mean position okay then slowly by and by the entire amplitude will be killed with respect to time you can see that the displacement is it is moving toward mean position and ultimately after infinite time the vibration will stop and no more vibration will be produced so actually over damping is not a periodic motion simply the particle will come to the rest and will be zero no vibration at all now what happens in critical damping same thing in case the particle or the mass starts from amplitude okay as like same that of over damping you can see that the particle is moving toward the mean position this red line is showing the critical damping okay but it is in fast fashion you can see fast manner compared to that of over damping critical damping is in a fastest manner the particle will move toward the mean position however still it will take infinite time to reach the mean position but compared to that of over damping it will reach toward the mean position rapidly this is what the difference between the critical damping and over damping okay and critical damping is also not a predict motion because once the particle reaches the mean position then no more vibration will be there now what is under damping in under damping the particle will keep on vibrating under damping is the case when the uh, this damping coefficient is less than 2 mega m or zeta is smaller than 1 so the particle will keep on executing shm however continu continuously the amplitude will keep on reducing you can see highest amplitude then lower amplitude then lower amplitude then even lower amplitude like this okay so under damping is a periodic motion okay in case the damping coefficient is less than 2 mega m then the particle will keep on vibrating however continuously the amplitude of vibration will reduce okay so this under damping is the only case in which particle keeps on vibrating and in vibrating manner ultimately the vibration will reach to zero now we know this thing in mathematics for every curve there is a relation there is an equation okay and for every equation there is a curve so for over damping there must be for this curve also there must be some relation that relation is x equals to x naught upon 2 root zeta square minus 1 inside this zeta plus zeta square minus 1 root e to the power minus zeta plus root zeta square minus 1 omega t plus inside the bracket minus zeta plus root zeta square minus 1 e to the power minus zeta minus zeta square minus 1 root omega t okay so this is the formula this is the equation for over damping case in case c is greater than 2 omega m okay and in case it is critical damping that is this red line okay the x the displacement of particle with respect to time equals to x naught 1 plus omega t e to the power minus omega t here x naught is what the initial amplitude from where the mass is starting to move toward the mean position this is the initial amplitude of the mass okay now for the case of this under damping the displacement equals to x naught by root 1 minus zeta square e to the power minus zeta omega t sin you can see the sin function has come it means it is some sinusoidal wave okay and inside the bracket omega t root 1 minus zeta square plus tan inverse root 1 minus zeta square upon zeta this is the formula for this uh, under damping case okay so what we see from this formula that e to the power minus zeta plus zeta square minus 1 into omega t 
on the right hand side of this equation okay all the things are constant except this t omega is constant zeta is constant and x naught is constant okay so what we see over here that minus zeta plus zeta square minus 1 root is always a negative number reason being imagine one thing if it would have been only zeta square okay then minus zeta root zeta square would have been zero but zeta square minus 1 and root it will be always lesser than zeta itself because zeta is zeta squares root is zeta so minus zeta plus zeta is zero but zeta square something is reduced from the zeta square so definitely the root will come out less than zeta so minus zeta this zeta is greater than that quantity so it will be negative here also you can see minus zeta minus zeta square minus one is also negative so e to the power negative power it means as the time elapses more the negative power is there lesser the magnitude will be so with respect to time the particles position will be reduced okay this equation tells this thing now for this case also you can see this is negative power of e again with elapse of time the magnitude will go on reducing because omega and x naught are co uh, constants okay so here also you can see that the particle is moving toward mean position continuous continuous reduction of amplitude is there and here what we see we know this thing that uh, the general equation of simple harmonic motion is given by this uh, x equals to x naught sin omega t so in case you compare this formula with this formula okay so whatever outside this sign is acting as amplitude okay so e to the power minus zeta omega t so this entire expression is acting as amplitude but it is negative power of e so it means what continuously the amplitude of vibration is reducing because you can see it is e negative power of e so with the increment of time lesser this value will be okay so amplitude of vibration will reduce and since it is sine function okay so it, this is sinusoidal also so this shows for under damping case the particle will keep on vibrating however the amplitude will keep on reducing okay so hope you would have understood that uh, what is damping and what is critical over and under damping okay so in case you want the derivation of these expressions then i will make separate lecture and i will provide you the links thank you